whether you believe indie game development to be easy or not, making successful games that actually rack in real revenue definitely is. As a full-time developer working my dream job, I want to help inspire as many hobbyist developers as I can while still keeping this idea as realistic as possible. Now, making good games is only one step of many in creating successful indie games. And so, introducing our brand new series on the channel, How to Game Dev. This brand new series will cover a wide variety of topics all geared towards helping you become a better game developer and understanding the realities of professional indie game development. In order to create actual successful games, we need to begin with the most important aspect of what makes a good game. This is the brainstorming or the idea phase. This first episode will be a quick introduction into the basics of developing better ideas for your games and creating an easier workflow for creative brainstorming. With this first method, I would like to explain the importance of fine tuning your focus through what I would like to call restriction equals expression. When I talk about this idea of restriction, we can use this analogy to paint a picture. Imagine you're somebody who loves playing video games. Now let's say your video game console has just been granted the ability to play every single game that has ever existed. While this might seem fun for a little while, what may end up happening to most is you end up searching through an endless list of amazing games and you can't really ever settle on playing anything or end up feeling cheated because there might be a better game to play out there and Demon's Souls might not be your number one choice even after finally deciding to sit down and play it. Having infinite opportunities may lead to disappointment. Or worse, it may lead to you becoming so overwhelmed with possibilities that you never make a choice in the first place due to not finding the best possible option. This same principle can be applied to creating a game idea for your next major project. Well, what can we actually do to rein in this endless opportunity of choices? A great way to get started would be to come up with five game ideas based on a specific topic. Think of something like a random theme generator you find online, or if you haven't already, try participating in a game jam. Game jams allow you to explore your creativity by setting a specific theme for everyone to partake in and only give you a small amount of time to achieve your prototype, meaning your game can't shine through hours of ever-expanding content. What makes a great game in a game jam is the foundation. Training your brain to come up with exciting concepts from restricted thinking can help you fine tune your focus for better brainstorming sessions. We've discussed the popular opinion of working off of themes to spark specific interest for focused creativity, but what about an unpopular opinion? What about using a dreaded game dev concept that we should not speak of here on YouTube, but use it for a beneficial purpose? If you haven't guessed what I'm talking about already, I'm talking about the dreaded Creepscope. Everyone in game dev speaks of Creepscope as this evil principle never to be used. But what if we purposely partake in scoping out our project overly large with no intention of ever actually making the project? The point of this exercise is to create an extremely simple game concept and to see how far you can push the idea only using cohesive and consistent mechanics to expand the base design. If we take a quick look at my upcoming indie game Monster Tribe as an example, you can see that the game does have a ton of mechanics that don't necessarily seem to fit together all that well on the surface. Mining, fishing, woodcutting, battling and collecting monsters, exploring an open world, and completing quests for villagers. These all seem like individual mechanics thrown into a single experience, but each aspect of the game has been built specifically in mind to aid in every other experience. From the gather mechanic being crucial to actually resurrecting DNA to obtain new monsters, but also being used to clear new paths to acquire new areas in your exploration, which then leads to finding new monsters to battle, obtaining rare materials for quests to advance the story. Every component of the game is crucial to the main gameplay loop, 
from exploring the collection aspects and even the battling, everything feeds off of one another like a natural ecosystem. Okay, so seriously, I know a lot of sponsors can be tedious and boring, but before we get into the final method of becoming a better game developer through building your concepts and ideas, let me quickly explain how today's sponsor, Rise, is extremely useful to me and the majority of game developers out there. As a full-time entrepreneur, the apps I use to help me stay on track are very limited. I don't have a ton of mental space in my brain to fill my desktop with dozens of apps, so the products I use are truly amazing at what they do. Rise at its core is a productivity app focused on keeping track of where you allocate your time throughout your workday. It breaks down your daily routine into the apps and software you use and categorizes them from themes like emailing, documenting, video editing, the breaks you take during your work hours, and tons more. You can check out how your daily, weekly, or even monthly time management is broken down and even set up goals for yourself like setting minimum work hours, limiting distractions, or even adding more breaks to make sure you avoid things like burnout and procrastination. My favorite features would have to be checking out the productivity circle chart of my workday percentages and my total daily hours worked so I can better understand how much I am actually getting done in a given day or week. Seeing where your time goes is actually extremely handy and something I didn't even know I needed until I started doing it. I highly encourage you to give Rise a try for free and maximize your productivity. If you do enjoy the app, the first 1,000 to sign up using my code RISEJOFOY or by clicking the link in my description will get 25% off their first three months with Rise. All right, so now for the third and final technique for building successful game ideas. Now, the last method we will look into is one that can be done with no prior training or creativity skills required. This method is what I'm calling developing from inspiration. Now, some people may call this method idea copying or even idea stealing. However, I would like to approach this in the proper way to avoid negative reactions. When I mention developing from inspiration, what do I really mean? Well, everyone in this world is influenced by the people and events that happen around them. Creating games is no different. We find inspiration from our favorite books, movies, games, and even our personal hobbies. I remember when I first started developing games, I immediately made it a priority to create a prototype of what it would be like to skateboard in 2D. Drawing from your real life interests can become extremely powerful in building great game ideas and the combination of your experiences and interests will create a unique concept in itself. Try this out for yourself. Pick two to three major influences in your life to create a game concept out of. For example, I love to work out. Now, I also love simulation games like The Sims. And based on my current game, Monster Tribe, you can probably tell I enjoy concepting monster designs. Well, what if I were to create an entire simulation game around taking care of a monster that has to exercise to become stronger to compete in athletic challenges? Making some kind of modern day Tamagotchi app based around the theme of physical advancement. Now, this was just a quick example I came up with, but when you pull from your own hobbies and interests, you can really take off with your ideas and build some awesome games. I really hope this introduction to the How to Game Dev series was useful to you in some capacity, but this has only been the first episode in a very long series I plan on creating. If you'd like to help me out, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, and I hope to see you soon.